Hey, Tom Moran here from Thomas Big Spiders. I've had a few requests late, lately to talk about how to rehouse the three basic types of tarantulas. And by that, I mean the terrestrial species, which are the ones that usually live on the surface of the dirt, the fossorial species, which are the burrowers, the ones that live underneath and build tunnels, those can be a pain in the butt, and the arboreal species, which are the tarantulas that are tree spiders. They live in trees, they live up off the ground. So I've done a million rehousing videos, and at first I just thought, you know, I'll just kind of use some of my old stuff to put together, but I've done some recent rehousings of all three types of spiders, and we just actually broke one out just for this video of fossorial species. So I think what it'll do is put something together with some tips. Now to start off, as I flip on this light here, boom, my new light. Here's some of the tools you're gonna want. I always have a larger, plastic enclosure that a plastic case that I can put the enclosures in. I have this one. I have a very deep one that I can also use. But for me, I want to be able to get down in, see everything and maneuver. Some people use a bathtub. The myth is that they can't climb the bathtub. They can climb it, albeit if you spray it down beforehand, it's much more slowly than they would normally climb. For me, I don't like using the bathtub because I feel like I'm kind of constrained with movement and it kills my knees and I'm getting old and I don't like that. Things you want to have on hand, catch cups. What I do for these, I've had people to ask, there's no big, like this isn't a genius invention where I put the holes. I just kind of take my soldering iron and I put holes where I think I might need to stick a straw in or a smaller paintbrush. You can use either of those. So I would have paintbrushes on hand, holes in here. Notice I have a few of them. I will show when I do my arboreals how I make these. Well, basically it's very, very simple. I just tell how I make them. You just cut holes in cardboard, trace them out, cut inside. And then these allow you to kind of transfer without giving the spider a place to escape. Tongs are a necessity. You can get the bamboo ones. I want to get some bamboo ones as well. But these are great for pulling things out. And spoons for ones you have to dig. So just some basic tools you want to make sure you're on hand. I encourage people to find a time where nobody's around where you can set this stuff up. Take your time with it because the trick with successful rehousings is not to panic the spider, which leads to you getting panic, which leads to a nightmare. So a couple things to just think about. Having different size catch cups in different shapes is also something. I bring this up later, but I like the rectangular ones because what will happen sometimes is when the spiders bolt, if they do get out, they get in the corner, and you can just kind of drop this one down. And then make sure you have a piece of cardboard handy to slide right underneath it. So with that said, what we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and show a couple rehousings I did. Terrestrials are pretty simple. Arboreals can be a little fun, especially when you're dealing with pokies or some of the Tapanakinia species, things of that nature. So we'll go through that and then we'll dig one out. I will also go ahead and there's a little note section. Wait, I'm going to be, it's going to be over here. It has a little question mark or explanation point, a little gray bar. I'm going to link some of my other videos there to show even more examples because I have some that I dig out of bigger enclosures. But the trick is stay calm, don't rush it, and if the spider starts getting spooked before you get it out of the new enclosure, just let it go, put the top back on, walk away, let it calm down. The trick is to not have them all spooked and running around. And before we go on with the video, I do want to do a special shout out for Landry Connor. I believe she's a fan of the channel. I actually correspond with her father on it, and I'd like to shout out her elementary school, which is Lancaster Elementary School in... Madisonville, Louisiana. Hopefully I got that right. All right, I'm going to cheat and look at my notes. Got it right. So, hi Landry, thanks for watching the channel. Hopefully when you get a little older, maybe you'll start your own channel and I'll see you on YouTube as well. I love hearing about young hobbyists because it really is a great hobby and I think when kids learn early on that these aren't animals to be feared and crushed, it kind of spreads. They talk to their friends about it. Their friends get interested. I teach. I know I do the same thing as well with my students where I hear them like brag because they rescued spiders instead of killing them. So Landry, nice to meet you. Hope you enjoy this. Now we're going to move on to the rest of the video. Okay, I'm going to stop talking for a minute. We're about to rehouse my adult male, Therophosa Sturmy. I got this guy as a sling about three years ago, three and a half years ago. Desperate need of a rehousing. He was actually, I was going to get him out of this sooner, but he was in heavy premolt and had gone underneath his burrow. Now he's going to be running around like a little madman looking to mate. I do have an adult female that I'm thinking of pairing him with. I just want to get a better grip on the size. I don't like to breed uh, 
large males with my females that are actually larger than the females just in case something goes down. And I think they're very close in size. So we'll have to see once we get this guy out and fattened up eventually. You can see his bottom's a little bit small now. I'll go ahead and flip this light on. I'll try to break the other camera out at some point. I don't know if that's helping or hurting. So I'm going to try to get the cork bark out of here, which is not going to be fun. I'm going to reuse it. There you go, buddy. I'm just going to go ahead and drop this right in. Oh, good thing we got them out too. There's some nasty mold. Gross. I'm going to stick this over here. Oh, this is trashed. <clears throat> oh, no, it's all in good shape. So let's get this crap off. And these guys' hairs are nasty. I've yet to get haired by one. I don't think I think it's quite a little auxiliary hair one. And I found I'm putting this hide in there. Honestly, the last adult male I had, his sole purpose was to mate. He ran around the entire time and never used his hide after his ultimate mold. So I'm assuming this guy's gonna do the same thing. <clears throat> I'm hoping I just didn't even know that mold was in there. And of course, she's going to go right over the mold spot so we can bring that right into the new enclosure. <clears throat> oh man, he's big. No, 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 no. Kick him here. Kick him here. There you go, buddy. Sorry, buddy. No, no stop, 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 stop. Like he's going to listen to me. <laughs> I'm playing with the dogs. Stop. Oh my lord. All right, so I've had some discussions lately. There's some people that just aren't a huge fan. Oh, look at the hairs. You can see the hairs going up. You do not want those on you. Those things are nasty. If you notice, I'm actually wearing my sleeves pulled down. Usually they're up. But I've had some discussions with people that just aren't impressed with the Theraphosa species because they're just giant, big, brown spiders. It's the size that amazes me on these guys. Like, I'm still, after all these years of keeping, just in awe of how big of a spider these guys are. For somebody that came from a background where I was terrified of little spiders for years, just to have this guy right here in my hand is just awe-inspiring. So I'm just still, I, I get it. I get why people aren't fans of them. And I think a lot of people think the husbandry is much more difficult than it is. I don't find it to be that difficult. You know, keep it a little moist, give them a water dish and a hide, and they're good to go. But uh, just an amazing species in my humble opinion. So we're going to go ahead and try to coax this guy out without kicking a bunch of hair. This cardboard is probably going to go in the garbage because I'm not going to bother trying to reuse it. There we go. And I'm going to pull it up. There he goes. And this is going to go right in the garbage. Like playing around with that. We're going to have to wash this thing up. We're going to go ahead and try to get this off and get a good shot. And you can see the hair on his abdomen all buggered up. i put the cap over right here. All right, you ready? I'm going to have the top ready in case he bolts. Please don't kick, please don't kick, please don't kick, please don't kick, please don't kick. Yeah. yeah there he is. Theraphosa sturmy male. He's going to be doing some serious fattening up on this, and you want to go ahead and get a good shot. I'm going to try to get a good shot with the other camera, too. We've got lights, new camera. We're trying out some new stuff here, but you notice my video output hasn't been as much because this is a busy time of year for me, so to set all this stuff up in the midst of having to do the rehousing and everything is kind of a pain in the keister, but we're going to try some new stuff out. So there we go. We're going to fatten this guy up, and I'm more likely than not going to pair him with my big female. We'll see how it goes. I just don't want anything to happen to my big female. And he's a good size fella, and she's not quite as large as I want. Probably about the same size, about nine, nine and a half inches or so. So here we go. Nice, easy rehousing. And uh, hopefully there'll be a pairing video soon. Hmm? All right, we're about to rehouse one of my juvenile pivotatas. I just cleaned out this enclosure here, so we're going to go ahead and hopefully this goes nice and easy. I think this one's clamped onto the back of the cork bark, so we'll see if I can just get it out. Um, I've had several people ask about these little doohickeys I made. Personally, my goal when I'm transferring these guys is to make sure that I eliminate as many possibilities for escape as possible. As far as some of the feister old world species go, you don't want these guys around your house, your dinner table, up your walls, 
uh, especially when you have kids and dogs. So the trick is to kind of make something that kind of blocks them in so that I can get them out, have room to negotiate, but also make sure they can't bolt out around the side. So what this does right here is I can plate the cyst right over that and then I can rest it here to prod the spider out. I have different sizes as well. And all I do is get some cardboard. We order a ton of stuff from Amazon, so there's always cardboard around. And basically trace out a rim and then I cut on the inside of it with a, oh, I have one out here, utility knife. So very, very simple. You want to make it a little bit smaller so that it catches on the rim of the cup. And this one here actually works with <clears throat> this larger one here as well. So we just used it a minute ago. I didn't tape it because I'd already done the species before as far as the rehousing, but that'll clip right over that. You can make it a little bigger if you want. And basically what it allows you to do is work without the spider shooting up over the side of it. So nothing amazing there, but it, I found them very, very useful to keep the spiders in. You'll see in a minute when I use this one, I'm going to drop this one over the top of it to make sure that it can't squeeze out the side and then I can prod it down through. So I'm going to shut the heck up and we're going to go ahead and see if we can't get this one out of here. We just rehoused another one of the Rufaladas and it went incredibly well. I think it took like two minutes flat. And I didn't bother to tape it because I've done them before. Yeah, see, I'm trying to figure out if it's gonna. I can't see. No, I can see. I got it. All right. So there it is. I'm gonna get a shot of it before it bolts up. I got two of these now. I got from Tanya Fairna Tarantulas to replace my big female that died last year. Still bummed about that. It was my first pokey. Love that girl. <clears throat> All right. Well, away we go. Alright, that's not work. What we don't want it to do is go nuts and start bolting. Back down. So I shut my mouth off about the other one we did. It was about as ideal as you could get. Right, we'll use the brush part. It's weird because usually they go off the side, you're coming right, not attacking, but going like right toward the paintbrush. Crying out loud, though. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, crap. Oh, my God. That's why you don't lose your cool. You just went down. Yeah, I know. What the heck? <laughs> you knocked, nudged the car for a little bit and she went yeah, right down. Hold on, she's trying to squeeze out here. All right, one prop two, me and the footage. A little pain in the foot. Just tell me if it's, is it leaning over? It's somewhere to squeeze out. There we go. I can rumble. All right, well, now, that's why we use the cardboard, because if the cardboard wasn't there, she would have shot right out the other side. So it's a perfect example of why I do this. And now she is behind. Nope. Well, yeah, okay. She's coming out a little bit. Where is she? I'm going to go ahead and just slap the top on. Yeah. There we go. And the trick with these guys is obviously to just stay calm. There she is blending in perfectly with some of the moss that's in there. I found that most of them, and, and as you can see, I was prodding her with the brush repeatedly. She never struck at the brush. She didn't try to attack me. It was more like, just leave me alone. Let me get out of here. So there she is. She just had a molt, which is why her, she's got a little tiny hiney. So we'll go ahead and start fattening her up with crickets. What I usually do is let them settle in for at least, a, eh, usually about a day or so. Sometimes I'll try them at night and they're ready to eat. These guys are really good eaters. So there we go. Piece of Lotharia. The Tata Ghost Ornamental or Petersini Ornamental, or I'm sure they have a million other names for it, but love this species. This, again, was my first species of pokey, and as you can see, 
one of the reasons I recommend these guys to folks who are just getting into pokies is they're rather laid back for a pokey. I mean, this one's just been fiddled with to death and she's just kind of calmly going around. So we'll go ahead and get the top completely on. We'll get her in her corner of the room where it's a little darker so she can settle in and we'll be all set. No, it's fine. It's not in. I was looking at it. Here we go. Oh, sure. Alright, for the last bit of rehousing, we're going to do a fossorial species, which is one that lives under the ground that burrows that you need to dig out. I've done dozens of these, but I have to admit these are probably my least favorite to do because it can be a little bit tedious. I think the best bit of advice I can give is to have, obviously, something you can get the dirt out into. Um, one of the things I do sometimes, because it helps, as I spit all over myself, my God, is just mist down the side of the plastic a bit because it makes it harder for them to get a grip if they do get out. And the idea is that you don't want to block its passage. That's where you're going to get bit. If this thing starts coming out and I try to put my hand in there or block it, that's where the chance of a bite is going to happen. So the trick is to just allow the spider to come out. Usually what ends up happening, we'll see how this goes, is that they dig down in the bottom, they kind of burrow in, and as you dig out the dirt, they cower in the bottom and you can usually grab them. Sometimes when you get that last bit of dirt out, though, they bolt. Now, what I have here is a Phlogius Craftspies male, which, uh, as luck would have it, I was going to recycle some old footage of me digging out one for this video, and I really wanted to show something fresh and not reuse it, especially for the people that watch all my videos. So I was looking in my room, and I happened to notice finally that this guy is quite large, mature. I had no idea that he had had his final molt already because you don't see him very much. So we're going to get him out of here and into this over here. So with that said, what we're going to do is carefully dig out the dirt. Now there's a method called the flood method. I've tried it before. If you want to use that method, I don't use it. I don't like it. Um, supposedly you pour water down their den. Um, you can do it very, very slowly. And what ends up happening when you do it slowly is sometimes they will pop up on the surface. Uh, the last one I did, I poured it in quickly because I've had it when I've done it slowly before. What I've had happen is the dirt, the water just soaks into the substrate and then the tunnels collapse, so I was trying to be careful. So we're gonna go ahead, he is in this corner. The other thing is try to keep track. Sometimes you can't tell where they are. Oh, and then make sure you have a spoon with a long handle and make sure you apologize to your wife beforehand when you take it. Because <laughs> if this doesn't make its way back into the kitchen drawer, I'm in trouble. I did ask this time though. Last time I just got caught doing it. What I'm gonna do is get a piece of cardboard ready as I can see it, I'm going to come over this side. That's it right in there. Now I see where the spider is. If you don't see where the spider is, you want to work very carefully. Sometimes you can get the substrate, especially with the moist species, and most of the fossorial species do require it moist. You can get the substrate to kind of come out in clumps. So what I will do in a minute is I will squeeze the bottom of this and let the dirt kind of work its way out. Here we go. Just like that. Where's it go? So if you squeeze the dirt, no, oh, here he goes. All right, so now we're going to try to get this one. Oh. Push this one begins here. No, 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 no. Oh. 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 And these guys are ooh, completely fatal to dogs and cats. I said dogs before, and I didn't mention cats because I own, obviously, or I keep, have keep, yeah, I'm a dog keeper. I have three dogs, but there we go. That's a Phlogius Crassipes, mature male. This one matured much smaller than my last mature male. It was actually, this shocked the heck out of me. So as you can see, 
Get the dirt out, just little tricks. If you have an enclosure, this works with the sterilized stuff. Obviously a hardened acrylic enclosure, it won't work as, as well. But I used to, I like to use these for the medium sized ones because you can just kind of squeeze the sides, loosen up that dirt and pour it out. And the thing is you want the spider to not get panicked. In an uh, other video I did, in the female, she kind of bolted out of there, ran around like a little alien face hugger. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in its new enclosure. Now, a little note about the species. These guys are fossorial at, um, as they grow up. Man, I'm stuck with a lot today. I'm gonna practice. These guys are a fossorial species, but I found that the males do not dig after they mature. They kind of sit on top. I have from, I think this is my second second mature Phlogius craspies, and then I have my species Eunice male. This one I'm hoping to breed to my female. She's in pre-molt right now. She's pretty good size. So I'm hoping I can get breed this species because I do love them very much. All right, so what we're going to do now is be very careful. Now I have the hide. There's a water dish around here somewhere, but that's basically all there is to it. With the burrowing species, give yourself room to work, something to put everything into so you have extra you know, reaction time if one should happen to bolt, and work slowly. If the thing gets spooked and starts bolting around the enclosure, put the cap on, put the top on, let it calm down a little bit. So now let's see if we can finish this one up. We really matured out tiny. I don't know if you can get them in there. There he is, Billy zooms in. Will just crasp this. I'm gonna stick this on before he ends up on my dinner table and I'm divorced because he gets my dogs. My dogs are barricaded in the other room right now. I wanna make that very, very clear. So there you have it. Billy wants to swing around. I'll close this one up. On this guy. So that's all there really is to it. Have lots of catch cups ready with any rehousing. The best deal is, I, if you notice, I have them all over the place. I have different shaped ones. So if you have rectangular ones, if they get in a the corner, these are easier to drop right down. <clears throat> Excuse me. Over the top of them, keep pieces of cardboard around. Anybody that's watched my videos, sometimes I forget to bring the cardboard out. You really need that around there. Lots of spoons with long handles. If you're lucky, your wife will let you borrow her actual spoon. I should probably just go out and buy some long handled plastic spoons or wooden spoons. Plastic wood's better because it's a little softer. You're not going to injure the tea. And then basically all you do is carefully clear the dirt out while keeping a piece of cardboard or something handy to block it off. If it should try to bolt, you can't get the cardboard out in time, let it go. Usually what they will do is hit a corner and start racing around the enclosure. But the idea is to try to keep them contained as best as possible. All right, so we'll stop there and I'll end with my closing remarks. That's my new thing, my closing remarks. I just made that up. It's like Jerry Springer's final word or whatever it was. <laughs> All right, one more thing I do want to mention, although I didn't use any of these in those three videos where we just rehoused the spiders. I do use these all the time and wanted to show them off. This is basically a bottle, I believe it's polar seltzer water, right? And all I do is I cut the bottoms off of it, poke some holes in them, and these make great transfer things. So if Billy comes closer with the camera for a minute, I'll show basically how it works. Holes in the top, my buddy Casey Peter is also a hobbyist, taught me this trick. What you do is you drop them over the spider, you get the spider inside, and then you can get them out using two different ways. First way is you just Put the thing down, blow on the top, and usually the spider will try to get away from your bad breath and into the cage. The second way, which I also like, is if I'm transferring slings and I have a burrow with the dogs coming in because they can never stay out, you can take the cap off, and usually what will happen is the tarantula will hunker down right in here, and you can point this right in the burrow, and then just go poke it right in the back end, and they'll climb right in the burrow and be out of sight. Now, I use these to do the massive M. Balfouri rehouse that I was working on when we transferred the nine M. Balfouris in the communal, as you can see here, and they worked beautifully to rehouse all of those juvenile Balfouris. So I would highly encourage people that are looking for a way to transfer slings and juveniles to use this method. They work very, very well, and as you can see in the video, it went very, very quickly. So that's it for the tools that I use. Again, very I didn't invent this. I don't know where I picked it up from. A lot of people use them, the cardboard stuff, same thing, but they help really well in transferring and keeping the things um, contained and giving you a lot of options as far as how to direct them and how to get them into the new enclosures. All right, so that'll about do it. I think I've about covered everything there. The trick is to just be patient, give yourself time, don't rush it. 
And as with anything, it just takes practice to get used to it. The first couple ones I did, I was absolutely terrified. I can remember trying to rehouse my female piece of Litharia, the Tata, the first time. It was me and my oldest son, who's in his 20s, and we're both working through it. And we were both kind of looking at each other at one point, like panic. But you start to get used to it. You get used to their movements. You get used to what a calm tarantula looks like and what a tarantula looks like that's about to bolt. A couple tips that you can use that might make it easier. I've heard some people, they put them in a cold area, like a freezer to slow them down. I am not a proponent of that. If you can't deal with your old worlds when they're a little revved up and when the temperatures are warm, I, I don't agree with putting them in a freezer. But what you can do is rehouse them on a cold morning. So if it's a little bit colder, they tend to be a little more lethargic and slower and less likely to bolt. Um, I've actually done some in my garage before just because I have more room, I can contain them and it's a little cooler so it slows them down. Another thing some people will do is Kale walks into the back of the video, he's desperately trying to get into my YouTube channel, is crumple up pieces of paper towel and stuff and put it around the corners because what will happen is they'll bolt underneath the piece of paper towel and then they'll hide there. But when you remove the paper towel, if that happens, always use your tongs and carefully remove it because sometimes as soon as you move their cover, they're going to bolt again. And then again, the bathtub method. A lot of people love it. I'm, it's just not my thing. Everybody's got their own method of transfer. I just don't like the fact that I can't move around a lot. I'm bent over and if one of these things shoots out, I kind of have limited movement. I like being able to move around, get different angles, and work it the way I am used to working it. That said, if you use the bathtub, make sure you clean any harsh chemicals out of it and miss the whole side of it before you start. That'll help slow them down, especially those fast arboreal species. So that'll about do it. Hopefully some people will find this helpful. And again, I'll post it on the front page of my channel so that people can find it easily. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to check out some more. I usually put my videos down here. Or if you liked it enough that you'd like to subscribe to the channel, I'm going to go ahead and put my little circle Tom's Big Spiders thing up there. So thanks again for watching. For those of you who are already subscribed to my channel and for the new people, hopefully I'll see you in the comment section. My big smile. I never know what to do at the end of these.